5,526 at the Rose Bowl today. I've seen underdog Ohio State rally from a 10-0 deficit. Tie it at the half at 10. Take the lead on a pair of field goals in the second half. It's 16 to 10. Buckeyes with the ball. A critical third and five at the USC 47. Donnelly in motion. Schleister under pressure. They've got him for a sack at the 43-yard line. Chip Banks, 51, with Charles Usry, 79, in support. Schleister, his high this year, 233 yards passing, and he's well surpassed that today. And he's trapped by the blitz here. Chip Banks, 51, coming from the backside. It looked like there was room to step up into the, into the pocket a little bit. If he had done that, he might have had time to get that pass off. Tom Morris, after that sack by Southern California, will have to kick it. He'll hit it about the 33. Raymond Butler stands at the USC 13. Beautiful kick. Butler, fair catch at the 17-yard line. Good height on that one. It hung up there, and Butler could see too many red shirts. He wasn't going to run it back. Certainly want to thank all of those that have made our job so pleasant today, and the big people who really make this such a successful event year after year. In case of this Rose Bowl game, the chairman of the Rose Bowl Committee, Bill Nicholas, our old friend here in Southern California, Fred Hardcastle was the president of the Tournament of the Roses this year. Oh, how proud he must have been of that parade and this classic game, the Rose Bowl. And he gave us all a thrill to see old Blue Eyes as the Grand Marshal. In 40 years, he's made us all happy. Frank Sinatra. Charlie White, he's running like you can sing to this one. 40 tackles from behind at midfield. Laughlin, number five, may have saved the touchdown. Charles White rips off a big gator, and here comes USC. White. Again, they're running the 23 blast. <laughs> Go ahead, OJ. That, that means something to me, and he, he broke it outside. He gets caught from behind. I'm a little surprised. That's twice that's happened today, but that's the old bread and butter play, that 23 blast. And then Jim Laughlin, number five, that made the stop, their MVP. That's the reason he's their MVP. MVP. He's made that kind of plays all year. That was a hustle play. First down at the 49 of USC. It's white again. 45, 40. You couldn't have asked for a better script to the finale of this game within one point if they get this touchdown in. And they can go ahead if they get seven on the board. Four and a half minutes remaining. Late shift again by OSU's defense. Michael Hayes in for the tired white, and he gets a good gain on first down inside the 17-yard line. It'll be second down and four. Ohio State has been shifting late on McDonald. That time, McDonald came back with another audible. I think and he, he hit the open spot and got a big gain. Gentlemen, Charles White has set a new Rose Bowl record. 215 yards rushing. Breaks the record set by Bob Jeter, the Iowa star, as he ran against Cal in 1959. 215 for White. Marcus Allen drives to what appears to be a first down at the 12-yard line. It is first down USC with 3.47 left. Dick, you talked about the kind of job that the Rose Bowl Committee has done on this performance in the parade. Our two teams have done an incredible job of living up to everything that was expected of them. And it all comes down to this. 3.40 on the clock. They're within 11 yards of the goal line. Ohio State's defense knows what is expected of them. SC needs a touchdown to win, and the game is on the field. SC uh, needs a touchdown to go ahead. Don't forget Art Schleister is on, on that Ohio State team. Charles White back in the game, and he drives to the eight-yard line of the Buckeyes, a gain of nearly four, second down, a long six. A contemplative Earl Bruce, 48-year-old head man of the Buckeyes. And John Robinson. A new five-year contract stuffed in his back pocket, but right now he's as interested in that scoreboard and what's happening in front of him as the 105,000 plus here in the stadium. Second and six. Rakshani in motion. 
White off right tackle and plows inside the five to the four and maybe the three. Right behind the block of Roxani. It's going to be third down as they spot the ball at the four-yard line. Third and call it two and a half. Well, we know we're in four down of the country now. And you know, SC is not, not in any hurry. It's two minutes and 26, 25 seconds left to go in the game. They love to score with less than a minute to go in the game. They don't they have to any score time score. on that clock, do they, OJ? The other thing they can do is get a first down without getting a touchdown, and they may well be able to do that. Well, they've had a pitch and a fumbling the ball down here over the last few years, so I think they'll take the touchdown now if they can get it. Third down, two. White. To the goal line, but not in. He is not in the end zone. That's an SC player signaling touchdown, but it's first and goal, USC on the one foot line. And you know who the crowd would like to see carry it in. He deserves it on this drive. I think the SC crowd don't care who carries it in right now. <laughs> you see the ball snuck up right next to the end zone and watch the offensive surge. We talked about the physical superiority on the line of scrimmage. You see it right there, and you see great second effort from Charles White as well. First and goal. A touchdown to tie. An extra point would give SC the lead. 1.38 left. Clock is running. White. Buckeyes lead it 16 to 10 and they have a first down at the 47. Before he left the field under his own power, he's been replaced by this man, 46 Tim Spencer, who drives into SC territory to the 48 yard line. Dennis Johnson with a tackle. Murray has been bothered by a hip point injury all season long. We don't know if that was the case on that last play. He's had a, a big day, 78 yards, the leading rusher all season long, just one yard under 800. I think he was bothered by a hit by Chip Banks, number 51, who hit him before he went to the ground. He got his bell rung. You see them talking to him. He's not back yet. Second down and six. Alabama won earlier against Arkansas. Houston beat Nebraska in the Cotton Bowl. Spencer play a little slow getting off. That's an interesting contrast to that same style play with White carrying it. Well, I think at, at USC, they, uh, you're taught or you run the play so many times, you really you really know when to turn it up. Now, on that play, I think the back may have been able to turn it up right away. The outside linebacker sprung it out real uh, uh, well for USC, and uh, he, I think he should have turned it up. He would have more success if he have turned it up right away. Looking up the clock, Dick, 6.06 left to go. Third down, a big third down here. Ohio State would like to control the football if they can. If they can keep this drive alive, they may well be able to wipe out that time on the clock. And Ohio State has elected to call a timeout. Schleister visiting with his head coach, Earl Bruce. Six minutes and six seconds remain. Ohio State leads 16 to 10. 17, Ohio State 16. Rob Kerr to kick it off. The time remaining, 132. Ohio State has two timeouts left. They need only a field goal to win. Good kick. That's almost out of the end zone. Tyrone Hicks will take it there and the touchback of the 20. Yeah, that was a big kick. You know, the position means everything right now. It is a very, very big kick. It came a long way from being over. That last drive, Spear 
spearheaded by the charges of Heisman winner White. They went 83 yards in eight plays. White took the ball six of those eight plays for 71 of the 83 yards. If ever he capitalized his Heisman ability, he showed it on that drive. But now it's Arch Schleister's turn. And how often we see it, Dick, you control a great back through much of the ball game, but somewhere he's going to pop up and hurt you. Charles White did it when it had to be done. Ty Hicks, a speedy man, is in the game, and Schleister's looking for him. Incomplete at the 35-yard line. It's second and ten. There's time for Ohio State. They don't need the big bomb. They just need to move the ball downfield, get it within Anakievsky's range. Let's just check what that is. His longest ever was this year, 51 yards. But he has improved during the course of the year in his distance, and in practice is hit from outside the 60. Second and 10. Charles White. 200 yards plus. Oh, he looks as if he's the played a battered game. gladiator. Is that a classic pose? What a game he's had today. Wow. Schleister under pressure. How did he get that off? It's incomplete. Intended for Gary Williams, a man who has caught two long, long passes from Schleister today. Banks was wearing Schleister's uniform. He's also wearing number 51 Banks and 70 Edwards right here. Both of them on top of him. Bam, bam. He's lucky to get it out of there. Lucky it wasn't intercepted. I think he had a feeling for the open territory on that one, Dick. 123 left. Look at the pressure on Schleister. Ooh. That right alone. on my head. <laughs> that alone will throw off the aim. Yep. So the defense for SC will loosen a bit. Remember, it was in a similar situation at the end of the first half that Schleister hit the long bomb for a touchdown. Protected better this time to Donnelly, but misses way over the head of his intended target, Doug Donnelly. So it comes down to fourth and ten, Ohio State. They have to go for it. It was in a situation like this earlier in the year that Schleister brought his team back against UCLA. They were down. They came back, went about 80, 85 yards. But he doesn't have that many downs to work with. This is do or die. There are no more opportunities after this one unless we see something most remarkable. O.J. Simpson is on his way down to the floor of the Rose Bowl. Time permitting, perhaps a chat. Wouldn't that be something to get O.J. with Charles White? Heisman to Heisman. Or maybe it'll be Schleister. Fourth and ten. He has to get at least ten. And it's almost intercepted. It matters not. SC gets the ball on downs. And there's only a minute 11 left in this game. I think Ronnie Lott didn't realize that it was fourth down. He was so pumped up about missing that, that pass. Let's watch the isolation here. Williams again, who had made the big plays, cuts inside. Lott slipped a little bit. Had the ball been thrown high enough, Williams might have had it. Lott missed it and said, how could I miss that interception? But the ball turns. Minute 11. All they need to do is grind that clock out. We'll see Ohio State call their timeout. But unless they can pull the ball loose, not much of a chance now. Looking for his third Rose Bowl win and as many opportunities as four years as head man. Here comes White. 15. And he's into the 13-yard line. And the clock is running. Ohio State. 103. 102 does not use its timeout yet. They have two left. It's 58 seconds. Still running. I'm surprised they haven't called their timeout. No question about the outstanding player in this game. He was co-MVP last year with Rick Leach, the outstanding Michigan quarterback. The Heisman winner wraps up an incredible four-year collegiate career. He's rushed for 238 yards today, far and away a Rose Bowl record. He scored what proved to be the winning touchdown, and now Paul McDonald trying to run out the final seconds. 29-28, the fans are starting to count. Charles White again, an encore for White. Short yardage. And with 20 seconds left, 19 still, Ohio finally, State they call finally it. uses one of its remaining two timeouts. I can't believe they didn't call it earlier and try and force SC to handle the ball a couple of more times. It really is the only chance they had, Dick. And I thanks to our NBC crew covered this 1980 Rose Bowl Classic. 
Harry Coyle, who has directed 25 of these beauties. He's the, our own granddaddy. Larry Cirillo, our producer, our executive producer, Don Olmeyer, with us today. All of those of you in the booth, our thanks, Dave Holman, Dave Rush, Joe Costanza, Jack Crote, Dennis Manishin, for your support. And flying high above Pasadena, our aerial ambassador again, Captain John Creighton at the controls. Thank you, Captain. Great job to get those sensational aerial views. Dick, you got to say that these two teams, as we said earlier, have lived up to the beauty of this day, the excitement of this Rose Bowl celebration. Magnificent parade this morning. A magnificent football game this afternoon. Hanging on our seats until the last second. Two great football teams and two well-balanced football teams. They gave us all the football we could digest during this afternoon. It all started here in 19-2. There are a lot of ball games to watch and enjoy, but this living up to its senior citizen title. It's the grandest of them all. They played to all of that tradition today. With just 16 seconds left, quite a final carry. Breaking tackles, and he's to the four-yard line. 10-9, and the clock stopped Ohio State's final timeout. And in some manner, the gallant Buckeyes in trying to stop the clock, hoping for that miracle fumble and a long play, are extending the incredible career of one Charles White. 246 yards for White. Ohio State, an underdog team, although they were rated one in the AP poll. And now the clock runs out. It's all over. The University of Southern California, led by that man, Charles White, has defeated a game underdog team from Ohio State. The final, Trojan 17, the Buckeyes 16. Coaches Robinson and Earl Bruce meet at midfield, shake hands, offer, I'm sure, their admiration and their congratulations of a job well done on both sides. It's a shame you have to have a loser in a game of this quality. In a game so evenly played, two teams so well matched on this day and trying to fight to cover their weaknesses, trying to exploit their advantages, well coached, well disciplined. They fought it out for a full, full ball game. It came down to the final seconds. And you're right, Dick. It's a shame that Ohio State has to lose, but they can hold their heads up. They know that they play great football. So who is number one? Ohio State has lost the game, so you have to figure the Buckeyes are not. USC has been tied only once by Stanford. Alabama won earlier, so they have to be turned. Now we are number one. And Florida State says, hey, we're on beat. What if we have an impressive win over a great Oklahoma team? And you'll see that in the Orange Bowl in a few moments. And, of course, the Trojans say, we're number one. You saw John Robinson race over to the cheering section and acknowledge their support. There he is. What a present for the man who has led USC so well. It looked like he was congratulating Ray Ellis, one of the defensive backs that O.J. talked to earlier. John Robinson has to be so excited, so thrilled about the way his team played today. Looks like O.J. has him down on the field. All right, take it over, O.J., with Coach John Robinson. Yeah, I'm down here with Coach John Robinson. Coach, the boys, they came back like champions. They call them the cardiac kids, and they certainly deserve that name today. Well, Charlie White and the whole football team, but Charlie White's performance in that last drive it's phenomenal. It's been that way all his career. He's the finest player I've ever I've ever been coached. But you got to look at this football game and say, there's no better show in the country. Both teams played great football. The Ohio State team, I thought, was super. I didn't think they'd ever let us in the end zone, and and I it was a great game all the way around. OJ. Well, Ohio State came in rated number one by one poll, and they certainly was deserving of that rating. What do you think SC should be rated now? Well, I don't know exactly. I I, I think I got to sit down and look at Alabama. For me, we should be rated number one. But a lot of people, there's probably two number one football teams in this country, and I think we're one of them. I'm sure Alabama's an outstanding team, too, but I can't think of anything. There's nothing else other than this football game for me. This was a great football game. God, uh, how lucky can a man be to be involved in something like this? Well, Coach, congratulations. I know you want to get in the locker room with the guys. Hey, let's have a few more, huh? Oh, yeah. O.J., it was great. Thank you. Guys. Thank you. You know, it's uh, it, you talk about... 
That's all right, OJ. Well, you know, you talk about champions. You know, I've always stated that the champions play best in the best games. And let me tell you, Ohio State came here. They played like champions. They played a super football game. It's a shame that they had to lose a football game. But once again, Charles White is voted the top player in the country this year in his performance. But they surely proved that he is certainly one of the finest players that ever played collegiate football. I'm proud of him. It was an exciting show. Uh, hey, I'm just happy. I'm happy that uh, the team won. I'm happy that it was a great game. It's a great way to start the 80s. It looks like it's going to be a super decade for sports. Dick, back to you. All right, OJ. Great job. OJ did a terrific job in restraining himself throughout the day. I thought I, I detected a little scar cardinal and gold coming out in his chat with John Robinson. Robin, to, to Coach Robinson, congratulations on his victory. To Coach Earl Bruce of Ohio State, hey, you're taking a proud band of Buckeyes back to Columbus. Thank you for an outstanding afternoon. I think everyone could be proud of this day. Indeed. The executive producer of this 1980 Rose Bowl game, Don Olmeyer. Of course, so many people responsible for the presentation of this Rose Bowl Classic on NBC. NBC was the very first network to carry the Rose Bowl in 1927 when Graham McNamee was the play-by-play -play announcer. And there were the Bill Stearns and Harry Wismer and some of the great men who called the games in that era. And then, nearly 30 years ago, in black and white, NBC television carried the game from Pasadena to the television. And Mel Allen called the games in. And Lindsey Nelson also had the privilege of sitting in the seat of which I occupy now. And my friend Kurt Gowdy did the last 15 Rose Bowls. And uh, it's, it's almost a cliche now, but it's really an exciting way to start the year. So I don't think they could have had a more exciting game to, to play with, nor a more beautiful day to, uh, to operate on. And I, again, I would have to say that we ought to offer our congratulations to this uh, Rose Bowl committee. They are the people who put it on for us. They did such a fantastic job. Stay tuned for that Orange Bowl, folks. Dick Enver, Merlin Olson, O.J. Simpson from Pasadena, California. Thank you for joining us. This 1980 game belongs to the University of Southern California. The final score, USC 17, Ohio State 16. Surprise at the intermission. The underdog Bills leading the defending champion Dallas Cowboys 13 to 6. Ready for the second half at the Georgia Dome. And remember, the Buffalo Bills will get the ball first to open the second half. They lead 13 to 6 by a touchdown. A couple of field goals aside. The two turnovers both led to a field goal. And for Buffalo, they have to be pleased with what seems to be a very patient game plan. Yeah, here's the numbers to support that, Dick. The guys at halftime we're talking about, especially uh, Joe Gibbs, from 0 to 9 yards, Jim Kelly is 12 for 12 for 74 yards. They've been very patient, but they've been in this spot before. Last year, they led the Super Bowl, or at least at least they won the first quarter of the Super Bowl. Now they've won the half, and they we also have the last time that they led in the Super Bowl, and it's when they played against the New York Giants. And they led because of uh, this score by Smith, and then Bruce Smith with a safety on Hostetler that it was almost a touchdown and that gave them a 12 to 10 lead. They trailed Washington significantly in the first half two years ago and they trailed by 18 at halftime last year. So for the Buffalo Bills and Marv Levy they're working from a positive yes. platform in the second half. Yeah, and to add what Joe Gibbs said in the, uh, the halftime remarks I think the second half of this football game for Buffalo and for Dallas is both efforts. Dallas certainly has the weapons to get back in this football game. They have not performed well at all. But in the case of the Buffalo Bills, they have the opportunity now. Can they take advantage of it? So Eddie Murray will kick it off. Jimmy Johnson's team held without a touchdown only twice all season long, and they did lose both those games. It comes down to Copeland. Copeland at the 25 to the 27. Johnson's Cowboys trailed at halftime to Atlanta without a touchdown and lost, and they trailed to these Buffalo Bills at halftime in Dallas early in the season, game two, and were beaten in that one. Here are the first half official statistics. Uh, total yards, uh, Buffalo with a slight edge, and we might also throw in an individual statistic in total yards, passing and running, pass receiving and running. Thurman Thomas had 20 more yards. 
than Emmett Smith 78 to 58 and an injured Cowboys Kevin Smith and that could be a very serious blow to Dallas's secondary he is regarded although the youngest man back there at 23 as their best cover man. So while we have a moment Bob Trumpy you talked before the game about how to defense Dallas that to take the outside and the deep stuff away make them play in the center of the field. That's what's happened. Uh, absolutely. And Buffalo's defense has slowed Dallas down. They have gotten uh, some positive yardage from Emmett Smith. They've gotten some positive yardage from Michael Irvin on the in routes. But you're right. They've not allowed the big knockout blow. Cornelius Bennett led the Buffalo Bills in tackles in the first half. That move of him in to inside linebacker has put him more involved in both the run game and also the pass protection game. You might also add that uh, you Buffalo fans know you didn't see that shovel pass much all season long. That's something put in for this game. Uh, although it seems to have uh, kind of worn out its walk. Yes. Uh, I, but it was effective a couple of times. But I think we know why they didn't have it in for the regular season. It looks pretty ragged. Kevin Smith looks to be not seriously injured. He's replaced by Dave Thomas at that left corner. Let's see if Jim Kelly goes after him. It'll be a first down at the Bills 28. Look at the numbers in the first half and I, I think the one thing we now have to worry about if you're a Dallas fan is how much of this hurry up offense wore down the Dallas defense because there was that one very long drive for Buffalo and this hurry up offense it doesn't scare opponents anymore but it will wear them out. And Kelly comes out with his three wide receiver set. And gives to Thurman Thomas and Thomas straight ahead to the 34 yard line. A good pickup on first down. Casillas and others on the tackle. When you lead, as Buffalo does, you can go to your hammer. And in the last couple of three weeks, there's been a resurgence in the running game of Buffalo, and it is Thurman Thomas. Good news for Dallas. Kevin Smith is back in the game. They throw to this side to Brooks. Brooks breaks the tackle and has a first down at the 43 yard line. James Washington with a stop. Kevin Smith unable to bring down Brooks on the initial hit. Well, this answers our question. This is certainly conservative. Just a hitch pattern run by Brooks. Smith tried to uh, close as quickly as he could, but Washington has to assist on the tackle. Brooks, Brooks breaks the tackle and has a first down at the 43 yard line. James Washington with a stop. Kevin Smith unable to bring down Brooks on the initial hit. Well, this answers our question. This is certainly conservative. Just a hitch pattern run by Brooks. Smith tried to uh, close as quickly as he could, but Washington has to assist on the tackle. Well, Kelly continues to throw underneath. Thomas hit as he takes a hand off, Bumble. fumbles the ball, and here comes the Cowboys. It's Thomas Everett with one man to beat Tina, and now he's on his way. Don Beebe, the Lone Bills, touchdown Dallas! Flag is down at the nine yard line. Now hold on, let's see if this will negate the touchdown. 46 yards on the return of the fumble, and Leon Lett making amends was the man who ripped the ball loose from Thurman Thomas. And now Bob McElwee with the official announcement. Personal foul. Number 51 on the intercepting team after the score. The touchdown is good. The 15 yards will be assessed on the kickoff. Leon Lett is the one who stripped the ball away, Dick. He got his arm in there. The second fumble now for Thurman Thomas on the afternoon. And the big cat. Gets his arm in there and strips it away from Thurman Thomas. So the Cowboys with less than a minute gone in the second half are positioned for the point that would tie it up. A new game at 13. And Leon Lett knocks it loose from Thurman Thomas for the fumble return. A flag is down. When we come back it'll be uh, Dallas kicking 15 yards uh, back so they'll be kicking off from the 20 yard line. Now let's see about this penalty. Holding on the offense so they're going to have to kick the extra point again. Holding on the left wing back of the try team. 10 yard penalty. Retry the point. 
So that a little tougher test for Eddie Murray. Still 13 12. Olet forces the fumble and James Washington returns it 46 yards for a touchdown. Washington, a man who's been unhappy, has not started many games of late, feels uh, frustrated, but against this Dallas offense using five DBs, Washington a factor. And now to Tom. No problem for Eddie Murray. 14.05 left in the third. It's tied at 13. In the Georgia Dome, the Dallas defense has struck quickly here in the second half. Leon Lett forcing the fumble, and James Washington returning at 46 yards. And now the kickoff from the 20 by Murray. Copeland settles at the 15. 30. 35 and protecting the ball to the 37 yard line. Let's go back to the big Dallas play. Well, we've talked so much about Leon Lett, and it's been nothing but negative, but there he is right there. He's going to beat Ken Hall around the block and strip the ball away from Thurman Thomas. Then Washington picks it up again from behind the offense. Great job, Leon Lett. Super strength to beat uh, Ken Hall and then Washington with the big return. And we said Dallas has a lot of weapons. We just didn't include their defense. James Washington who played at UCLA with Troy Aikman and Ken Norton and Thurman Thomas. Two fumbles have led to 10 points. A field goal and now the touchdown. And he's unhappy. Thomas gets it back. And only a couple of yards to the 39. After the play, Jim Kelly realizing he's got to keep Thomas's mood positive and Thurman not very uh, receptive. Thurman Thomas, does, he does have that problem. He will turn on himself. He'll turn on his teammates. But you're right, Dick. He's got to be a big factor in the rest of this football game. And second down and seven. Kelly incomplete and almost intercepted. Incomplete is a call, although Larry Brown thought he might have one. Andre Reed was the receiver. Leon led a year ago. Well, no, this is the fumble by Thomas just at the end of the first half. Led to a touchdown in a 28 to 10 Dallas lead, and the game was over. But now it's just tied. Now Thomas, uh, that has to ring up some memories that aren't very pleasant. Third down, and Kelly in trouble, and Jeff Coe brings him down. The first sack of the game for Dallas. Jimmy Jones was there as well. That was an all-out rush by the Dallas Cowboys, and they only needed four of them. Jeff Coat on one side. Jumps over the block by Fina. 94 is there. 97 is there. Three of the four defensive linemen on Kelly for that sack. So the Cowboys defense has responded to the charge of Jimmy Johnson. A fumble return for a touchdown. And now they snuff Buffalo in the next possession. Moore's kick high and short. Fair catch. Kevin Williams at his own 36-yard line. 13-14 remaining in the third. Dallas and Buffalo even. With Bob Trumpy, Thurman Thomas trying to wipe away and having difficulty assimilating uh, his two errors that have cost Buffalo 10 points. He's also scored a Buffalo touchdown. So Troy Aikman, first time he gets the ball, the defense has already given him a score and a tie game. He starts from the Dallas 36, and here comes Evan. Ripping through across the 45, 46, 10 yards on the play. Patton with a tackle. This is a dangerous drive for the Buffalo Bills. If Dallas, with that defensive score, it picks up their spirits, it transfers over to the offense. They're able to control the line of scrimmage. Uh, this is a, a defending Super Bowl champion. They know how to take advantage of opportunity. Ten points off two fumbles by Thomas. They spot it the 45 second and one and it's Smith again. Patton and Bruce Smith around his ankles. First down Dallas. Emmett Smith. Wearing number 22 uh, Bob Hayes. Great speedy wide receiver the Cowboys his number. His father played semi pro football at the age of 43 Emmett senior. Was a defensive back, and Emmett recalls how his daddy could hit. And that's all he would do is hit. And now it's Junior's turn, and he's like a different back in the second half. 
Those carrying tacklers for eight more. Jeff Wright finally gets him down. The team that adjusts the best at the halftime generally comes out the winner. To this point, Dallas had made the adjustment. Watch the pull by Newton, 61, and also the lead by Daryl Johnson, 48. Norman Smith inside both of them. And uh, Dallas now in a position to give it to their greatest weapon, Emmett Smith. Only 24 years old and three times the rushing champion. He's carried nine, three, and nine yards on this drive. And he gets it again. Breaks a tackle. First down. He's to the Buffalo 36-yard line. Four carries for Emmett Smith. And Dallas has gone from their own 36-yard line to the Buffalo 36. Watch one of the great attributes of Emmett Smith. Breaking tackles. That's Bruce Smith. That's no kid out there. Bruce Smith, one of the strongest players in the NFL. Emmett Smith has always had that ability to protect one side from the tackler. And a run with the ball on the other side. Uh, Aikman knows the defense zeroing in on Smith. Let's see if he goes to something big on the air. No, stay with 22. Look at the hole. First down all the way to the 23-yard line with Daryl Talley getting him down. Well, Dick Dallas has found something here. Uh, going to the guys up front. The uh, French fry king, Nate Newton, is going to lead up through here. And at 330 pounds... You're definitely going to see a big hole when Newton gets up through there. He gets an excellent block on the linebacker, and again, Emmett Smith breaks an arm tackle. This offensive line of Dallas now slowly taking hold. 82 yards now for Emmett Smith. Smith again. Inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. Darrell Talley went out holding his shoulder after the tackle of Smith on the previous play. Let's see if we can pick up the action he makes the tackle on Emmett Smith looked like he might have jammed his shoulder when he hit when he hit Emmett Smith, but you know he's got to be hurt. The old tally does not come out of many football games. It's tied at 13, and the Cowboys have taken this ball down the field like a different team than the one we saw in the first half. Richard Harvey has replaced the old tally. Harvey who played sparingly He's from Tulane. Second and six for Aikman. Play action. Smith is after him. It's a screen complete to Daryl Johnston. And the Moose has dropped at the 16-yard line as Mike Lodish makes a good tackle for Buffalo. Well disguised by the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, the fake to Lincoln Coleman, number 44. And Lodish is almost there to make the interception, but the linebackers really make the uh, tackle. Bruce Smith hits Troy Aikman and it comes up with some injury. Bruce Smith is coming off to the sideline. His right hand uh, he's favoring. Like he may have hit his crazy bone or something on the AstroTurf, but he has no feeling in his hand. Big play. Third down and three just outside the Buffalo 15. So Tally is out. No, Tally is back in the ballgame. But Bruce Smith is now out. Oliver Barnett replacing... Smith, Barnett, who came to the Bills from Atlanta this year. Emmett breaks a tackle. 10, 5, touchdown! Smith, the league's most valuable player this year, goes downfield, defying the defense with 61 yards on that drive to put him over 100 in the game, 102 total. He breaks the tackle of Jeff Wright, number 91. How many broken tackles did we see Emmett Smith make on that drive alone, Dick? Just that drive. He broke a tackle by Bruce Smith. He broke a tackle by Jeff Wright. And we've got an injured Bill down on the field. Phil Hansen, the starting tackle. And Smith, his emotions driving him even after the touchdown. You know, and that's unusual for Emmett Smith. Normally very controlled. There's Emmett, 22 and 88, Michael Irvin. They love him. 
And meanwhile, Hansen being attended to for Buffalo. So the Dallas Cowboys down 13 to 6 at halftime. In a little over six minutes of this second half, have scored two touchdowns, one on defense and one very impressive drive on offense. And Troy Aikman, you don't have to be a genius to figure out Absolutely. 22, do you? Just give it to 22, and that's what he did the whole drive. And Norv Turner, the offensive coordinator, knows when he's got a good thing. Again, we see the pull by Nate Newton, and Emmett Smith has the luxury of picking just about any spot he wants to run. He breaks the tackle of Jeff Wright, cuts up inside. What a player. He is just beautiful. And that drive, I think Dallas ran that little trap, that little lead by Nate Newton, that short pull at least three times, maybe four. Well, Emmett Smith, who grew up a Cowboy fan, he told us, and idolized Tony Dorsett. And congratulations to Tony Dorsett into the Hall of Fame announced yesterday. In fact, it was a big day for Cowboy stars for Canton yesterday. We'll take the time out. You're going to see the injury here, the double team on Hanson. And watch Hanson's right knee. You got about 650 pounds here. You got Gogan, right guard, Williams, right tackle. And Hanson taken to the sideline. Definitely a right knee injury as Emmett Smith scores easily behind blocking like that. You lead by Newton, a double team by those big guys. Eddie Murray now for the point after. Hits it, it's 20 to 13, Dallas. 14 quick points by the Cowboys early in the second half. They're trying everything they can to get Thurman Thomas up. Forget about his own mistakes. And for Buffalo, this would seem to be the acid test of their character in this game. They've fallen behind quickly after enjoying a halftime lead. And as uh, Ahmad Rashad indicated, from his experiences with the Minnesota Vikings when you don't win these games and that is your history it doesn't take a lot for the players to say hey, we, we just can't do it it's just not meant to be and this possession for Kelly and Thurman Thomas it would seem if they don't come out with something positive if they go three and out we may have just seen the end of the game yeah you're right Dick. the last drive by Dallas that was the Dangerous drive for the defense to face. I agree with you. This is now the critical drive for the offense to face. 